So now that we prepared everything, let us go inside of our player character blueprint and inside of the event graph and we are going to start adding actions. Now I'm going to delete all of this right here because we are not going to need it at the moment. When we need it, we will add it. So don't worry, just delete all of this, select it and press delete on your keyboard and that's everything you need to do. First of all, we are going to tackle the movement. And remember in the previous video, we created here our action mapping. So we have the move forward, we have the move right. So what we need to do is simply go here and right click and inside of the search here for the actions for the blueprint, I'm going to say move forward. Here it is. This is our move forward and right click again. And we're also going to have move right. So here it is our move right. Now, what we are going to do with these is we are going to connect them inside of our add movement input. So add movement input like this. And this is the one that we want and compile or actually not compile and save, but control and V to copy and paste, but also of course, compile and save. So compile and save. But in order for this to work, we also need to get the forward vector from our actor and we need to get the right vector. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to say get actor forward vector and right click over here and we're going to say get actor right vector. Now what are we going to do here? First of all, this is the execution order. And when we plug this in over here, it will execute this right here. Now we are in which direction we are going. So when we are pressing here forward, you see we have the get actor forward vector. We are going to plug that into the world direction, which means as you can see here forward, we are going forward in the world. What does that mean? That means over here, if I were to place my character, let me just go back in the content and blueprints and character and place my character like this. And let me just rotate the character. Now this is his forward. You see this right here is the forward and it will go like this. You see in the world forward and I'm going to delete him because we don't need him here and control shift S to save all. Now we're going to do also one more thing. That is the scale value. You see the scale value is the one that's going to be taken from the axis value over here. You see this axis value that is going to be this compile and save and go back here. This is the axis value. See this right here for our move forward. This is for the move right and this is for the move forward. So when we press W, this axis value over here will have a value of one. When we press S, it will have negative one and it will move. You see, Forward is the positive, which means when it's one, it's positive, it will move forward. And S is negative or backwards is negative. So when it's minus one, it will move backwards. And we're going to do the same thing for the right. So plug this in over here and simply plug the axis over here. And the value is going to be our right vector for the world direction, compile and save all of this. And we can test it out. So if I go back here inside of our introduction, if I click play, and if I try to move, you see now I'm pressing W, I'm moving forward. If I'm pressing S, I'm moving backwards. If I press A, I move left. If I press D, I move right. So this is that movement as you can see. And I can, well, now skip this. So again, this is our axis or move, input axis that is. And it is triggered when we press the W or the S, A or the D for the move right and respectively for the move forward. And we explain the scale here. And if something is not clear, ask in the comment below the video and I'm going to select all of this and right click on it and I'm going to create a comment from the section and this is going to be our movement like this to group this inside of our blueprint because we're also going to have now the rotation. If I go back now over here and run the game, I'm not able to, I'm moving my mouse left and right, but no effect. And in order to fix that, we're simply going to go over here and I'm going to right click and we're going to filter for the turn axis. Here it is, or our event, which is this bad boy over here. You see, we have the turn and we have the look up. So the next one is going to be our look up. So right click over here and we're going to filter for look up and click on it. And here it is. And the turn, as we know, is going to be triggered by the mouse X. The look up will be triggered by mouse Y, as you can see. So now where we are going to plug these in? Well, we're going to plug the turn inside of the yaw controller. So here we're going to say add controller yaw input. And if I right click again here, we're going to have, have add controller pitch input as you can see. 
and we're going to plug that in. So plug this here and plug the axis value over here and plug this one over here and axis value over here. Why the pitch and the yaw? Well, if I go over here and if I select the player character and let me just see, actually we don't have, do we have for the player character? No, we don't, we, we have for the mesh. As you can see here, the rotation X, if I hover over, it's called roll. It, y is called pitch and Z is called yaw. That's why here, we have the yaw and the pitch. And if you go over here, if you select the mesh, and if I rotate him on Z, you see he's rotating, you see he's rotating left and right on the Z. On the yaw, he's rotating up and down, as you can see. So this is what we want. And let me just put it back to zero, compile and save. And if I go back over here and if I hit the play button, so now if I move left and right, you see I'm moving to the right, he's looking to the right side. If I move left, he's looking left. But if I move up, and down, nothing is happening. So up and down is not is has no effect. But teacher, you told me if I do this over here, if I set it to the pitch, it will work. Calm down, calm down, my brother. I got you covered. What we need to do is select the player character over here. This bad boy, you see the player character, this dude over here, and scroll down here for the pawn. You see for the pawn. This right here, use controller rotation pitch, we need to check that. So make sure you check that checkbox, compile and save, which will now allow us to control the pitch rotation, which is the Z, or actually, excuse me, which is the Y rotation. If I go back over here, if I press play, and now if I move, you see what I'm doing? I'm moving up, or actually I'm scrolling my mouse down, but he is looking up. And if I scroll the mouse up, it is looking down. This is called the inverse. You know, inside of those games, you have options, especially for the shooter games, that you can invert or inverse your mouse, which means if you move, move your mouse up, it scrolls down or it looks down. If you move him down, the player looks up. This is because of the input over here. The look up input, you see the mouse Y is set to one. If you don't want to have that invert, you're going to set that to negative one. You see, set it to negative one. So now if I go back and run the game and if I move the mouse up, he's looking up. If I move the mouse down, he is looking down. So everything is normal. But I wanted to show you this if in case you want to have this as an option in your game. And if you played any first person shooter or any shooter game, you know what I'm talking about. Now, the last thing that I wanna cover is the jumping because here we have our jump, you see, for our space bar, when we press the space bar, but before that, let me just select all of this, right click, and over here, I'm going to say rotation. And the last thing that we are going to cover, as I already said, is the jumping. And in order for us to jump, we're simply going to filter here for our jump action. So I'm going to say jump, and we want this one input action events you see over here because we also have other options for jumping we want the one for the input action events so search for it again jump over here and click on it and when we press the jump what do we want well filter again here for the action i'm going to say jump and now we have this function for the jumping you see make the character jump on next update this is built in and also right click again we have a stop jumping function as well which will make the character stop jumping and basically we're simply going to plug plug these in so when we press the key that is set for our input action jump which in our case compile and save by the way which in our case is right here the space bar so when we press the space bar, it is going to make the player jump. When we release the space bar, it is going to stop jumping. Let's test that out. So let's go here, click on the play. And if I press space, we we're jumping. We, if I release it, we start falling. You see, we, we, and you get the point. I'm in, enough of me having fun over here. Okay. So yeah, this is it. And I'm going to right click on this or actually select this, right click it. And over here, we're simply going to denote it is for jumping so that we have everything grouped inside of our blueprint. Again, if something is not clear, please ask in the comment below. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Take care.